Well, good morning. <clears throat> well, I'm uh, getting ready to start a new project, uh, a new vase. Uh, and I like doing the waterproof vases. That way, uh, you know, whoever I give this to or whoever ends up with it, you know, they're not limited to just putting artificial flowers or something in it. So, you know, they can actually put live flowers in it if they want to. But I've got this piece of maple, and I think it's going to be perfect for this. It's got, uh, it's got ambrosia, it's got spalting, um, and so I just want to kind of see what what we can do with this. <clears throat> Maybe uh, I may end up doing some coloring on it. Uh, I don't really know yet if that's what it's going to end up being, but we'll find out. But, uh, but anyway, I'm going to get this. Get this over to the bandsaw. I'm going to cut it down to probably about eight, eight and a half inches. And it's uh, right now it's about five inch diameter. So it'll start out about five inch diameter and about eight and a half inches long. So, all right. Well, I'm going to get get that cut and uh, get it mounted up on the lathe. All right. Well, we'll just get started by finding the center. And I'm just using my my little center finder here. I go on all three or all four corners so that I get a more accurate count of where the center is. And uh, it's always right, right there in the middle of the square. Then we'll uh, get it mounted up on the lathe between centers. <clears throat> I have a spur uh, in the chuck and my live center and we'll just get this thing roughed out. This wood is pretty soft. Uh, it's it's got a good bit of spalting in it, and uh, I didn't really realize how soft it was until after I got to cutting. But sharp tools and and light cuts will do you good. All right, I'm just getting ready to cut my tenon uh, down here. I've decided to put it on the on the end with my chuck, so I'm just cutting it with my parting tool. And then we'll get this thing mounted up in the chuck. And now, now I get to start trying to figure out what I want to do. And this is what I've come up with. I divided it into one thirds. And I decided that, that the top two thirds will be a big cove up to the top of the vase, and then the bottom will be like a bead going down going down to the bottom. <clears throat> so, <laughs> nothing to it but to cut it out now. All right, we'll get the lathe started. And uh, this is where I found out that I have to make pretty easy cuts because uh, if, you can, if you can see the dust coming off, a lot of that is tear out. And uh, this wood was bone dry and it's pretty badly spalted. So it's really soft and it, it's hard to cut without tear out. Just make sure your tools are sharp and, and make light cuts and everything will work out fine. I also had a lot of bug holes and uh, things like that in this, in this piece. So I did a lot of repair work in it. But here we're just using <clears throat> just using my bowl gouge to round up to round off the bottom. And this this involves completely rubbing the bevel. And here I am making a few repairs before my finishing cuts on the bottom. just to stiffen up some fibers and things like that. Now I'll take some sawdust right off of the lathe to fill up a couple of smaller voids 
and you can see this big void that runs right up the side. Uh, that was a bug hole, and I've already got it CA, got CA in it. Now we're gonna start my cove, and I'll start it in the middle, and I'll work the top part, and then I'll work the bottom part, and just make them kind of meet in the middle. Just be very careful with uh, with these cuts and don't get too heavy if you're if you're dealing with spalted wood like this. Just try not to make your cuts too heavy, or you'll get really bad tear out. So we just work this piece nice and easy, making sure we get the shape that we want. And I'll cut down to the bottom of the cove from this direction, and then I'll turn and go back the other direction to make them meet. Light cuts. Once again, very, very light cuts. <clears throat> Just getting this cove cut. And here I am, I'm getting very close to the, to the bottom of the cove, but I decided here that I wanted it a little bit deeper. <clears throat> and I also want to cut down the top because my top was the same diameter as the bottom. And I really didn't like that. Uh, I didn't like those proportions. So I'm cutting a good bit up off the top and then we'll, we'll redo the cove. And I think, I think it made it look a lot nicer in the end. So we'll go a little deeper with a cove. There again. Be very careful with your cuts. Try, try to keep rubbing the bevel on these cuts <clears throat> and you'll get a nice, a nice easy cove. And we'll cut down from the top to try to meet in the middle in the very bottom and we'll have we'll have a really a really smooth looking cove Meeting at the bottom. Very nice. All right. We've about got the cove the way we want it. And no bad tear out. But we'll go back now and just harden up those areas with some CA. And I'll finish shaping up on the top before we do all our final shear scraping. I just want to make sure I get a nice rounded over top right here. Nice easy cuts or you'll get some really bad tear out. Alright, 
making a couple of cleanup passes here to get rid of the the uh, CA. Okay, that wood is absolutely beautiful. Just hoping I don't mess it up. <laughs> Give it a final, final little check. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put sanding sealer over this whole outside of this piece here. <clears throat> Mainly to help me with some shear scraping. It'll stiffen up the fibers and make it easier to, to shear scrape. And while I'm shear scraping my tool, it may not look like it in the video, but my tool is down about 45 degrees and the face is almost completely closed and this leaves a very a very smooth finish <clears throat> as long as you can cut the fibers and I'll do the entire piece in this shear scrape like this just look very lightly very lightly scraping everything down and it leaves a really nice uh, finish but we'll do this whole piece. Then we'll just start sanding about 120 grit and I'll sand the whole piece up through 400. Getting uh, prepared for my finish. And I won't even worry about uh, more sand and sealer. I, I put that one that one coat of sand and sealer and now I'm just sanding it out. All the way to 400. And then we'll get ready to start boring this thing out. And I'm just gonna bore it out. Well, I need to sand uh, against the grain or with a, with little circles. I use little circles to go back and, and make sure that I don't have any sand and scratches that are parallel or perpendicular to the lathe bed. And then we'll get ready to start boring this thing out. I'm using a two inch Forstner bit and my depth finder. I'm, I'm aiming for about a half to three quarter inches below uh, from the bottom and uh, you can see my my Forstner bit was slipping in the in the drill chuck a little bit but just keep your lathe nice and slow I was about 280 rpms here and uh, that helps keep from overheating the Forstner bit because if these things get overheated you're done <laughs> they're no good anymore with that there we go that's got us all the way down to the bottom now I'm just going to work on the very rim here on the inside I'm not going to worry about hollowing out the very bottom and the reason I'm not hollowing it out is just because it adds weight it'll help it remain standing but also I just I don't need to and it'll be harder to waterproof later with the epoxy if you've got a uh, an inside like a bulb shape on the inside and this is my sanded stick I've got 120 grit sandpaper on it here but I will uh, as I progress through my grits um, I just have to heat that up with a heat gun and that sandpaper will come right off and I use spray adhesive to put the next grid on. It's uh, really easy to use and it'll reach all the way to the bottom. It'll sand the inside really nice. So we just sand and sand and sand. <laughs> 
try to get some of those Forstner bit uh, marks out of the inside. And that does a pretty good job of it. Okay, now I've got my vase mount up here. I've used this thing for years and it's never, it, it's always done a really good job, but it is a friction drive. And I use it for taking off the tendon off the bottom. These have to be light cuts. They have to be very light cuts, but I'll, I'll take the tendon off and I'll shape up the bottom. And this face will be ready to come off the lathe. I'm just using a 3-8 spindle gouge here to do all of this work. And I'll switch over to my skew just to finish cutting this thing off, this little nub. So I'll use the toe of the skew just to nibble away right here at the bottom. and cut it off. Right there. And it's ready to come off. Okay, the epoxy that I'm gonna use on the inside is the uh, Amazing Clear Cast from Illumilite. Uh, it, it, it's a, it's a food safe finish, or a, a food safe epoxy. And uh, I'm gonna color it with these uh, Pearl X pigments. This is the copper, copper pigments. And I'll just mix it in with the epoxy that I'm gonna coat the inside with. It doesn't take, it doesn't take much, but I don't have much epoxy in there, very, very little. I, I tried to just, just mix up enough just to coat the inside, one coat. And I'll pour it in. And I'll pour about half of it in. And uh, just get me a puddle in the bottom that I can kind of move around. And I'll, and I'll use a chip brush just to even it all out and start pulling it up the sides. I pull it from the bottom up and just keep going from the bottom up all the way around, making sure I get uh, enough in there that if there's any cracks or anything in it that that epoxy will fill those cracks and just keep pulling up just keep pulling up with your brush And I'll do it all the way out to the rim. All the way out to the very rim. This copper really make, uh, this copper uh, Pearl X powder really does look nice on the inside of this thing. All right. So now we're out to the rim. I'll just go around and make sure that I've got it completely up to the edge. About six hours later, I'll come back and put my second coat in. And I'm just gonna use clear because I've already got the color on there that I want. And uh, now I'll just, uh, I'll put the epoxy in without mixing in any pigments or anything. There again, all the way out to the edge. After this coat, I usually test it to make sure that it will hold water. And if not, it gets a third coat and I'll keep doing that until, until it doesn't leak any water. But usually two coats does it. Now on the outside, I'm using a, a, a wipe on polyurethane Uh, and it'll take several coats of this but it's just wipe on polyurethane that I, uh, I mix up 
I just buy the polyurethane and I mix it uh, two thirds uh, polyurethane and then one third thinner. I'll coat the whole thing and then I'll come back in about three hours and make sure it's dry. I'll sand at 400 grit or either use 4 aught steel wool and I'll put another coat on and I'll do that until I get the, the finish that I desire on this piece. It's really easy to do and it doesn't take very long uh, between coats but it may take several coats. And that's it. That takes care of that. Nice little uh, spalted maple vase with ambrosia. I really like it. <clears throat> I really like it. And we've waterproofed the inside so it can be used for live flowers. Um, and the reason the reason I like doing that is because if I hand, if if I give somebody a vase or or if somebody buys one or something or or anything, they're not limited to just you know artificial flowers. They can they can put live flowers in it if they want to. So uh, you know, to me that just keeps it kind of well rounded. But we used a uh, uh, amazing clear cast from Alumalite <clears throat> as my my resin on the inside as my epoxy on the inside to waterproof it and it is a food grade uh, epoxy so uh, you know it shouldn't hurt any plants and I used a wipe on polyurethane finish and I think it turned out really nice it brought the colors out nice in the wood and uh, and the spalting spalting just looks pretty terrific just the, the thin black lines everywhere and the ambrosia. So, so we got a little bit of all of it in this. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this project and uh, we'll see y'all down the road.